Hey, what's going on everybody? My name's Chris. Welcome to part 16 of my first ever acoustic guitar build. You can see the status in right now. As I'm looking at it, it's got 18 coats on it, a finish applied. So how did I get to this point? Well, let's jump back just a few weeks real quick and see. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to use this to pour fill. Okay, guess just picked up some of that rosewood dust, it's turning colors. Alright, <laughs> seems easy enough, just uh, I think I'm supposed to wipe off the excess. It's got spots that appeared that I didn't notice before, like they're lighter in color. See that white spot? What is that? There's a few of them on the back. My hands are already getting tired. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come up with a, a rag to use. I think Eric Schaefer uses a rag or some kind of a foam, which I don't have. Could've got it, but I thought this would be good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sides. And then I gotta do the neck and stuff, so keep working for a little bit and I'll catch back up with you. First coat's done. It darkened things up a good bit, so it looks really cool. What I noticed the most is how much it darkened the neck up. The mahogany looks really cool um, when it's dark, so I guess uh, I'm gonna get a kind of an idea of what it's gonna look like once I got finished on it. So yeah, some of these spots on the back are starting to reveal themselves. Look at that. I don't know if that's just a, like a wet spot where the filler, the pore filler is down in some pores and hadn't dried yet or what? See, there's another one. What is that? Anyway, uh, wasn't that bad. My hand got tired. That was probably about the worst thing. But uh, I'm going to let it dry for a little while and then come sand it off, sand it back down to wood and then maybe do another coat. This is the third try at doing this. The first couple of times I got it off center and realized it was in the wrong position. So I finally got this taped off and I think I'm ready to uh, move forward. It took a little while, but I got all the tape on the fretboard. Of course you saw me peeling the tape off for the bridge. I got some stuff stuffed into the hole right here and uh, I gotta clean the guitar off, I'm rub it down, let it dry for a minute, then I'm gonna go ahead and start finishing. So I'm using a true oil method uh, that I learned from Eric Schaefer on his website. I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, basically it's gonna take anywhere between 12 to 18 coats. So it's going to take a little while, all right? So this is going to be my first coat today. And then uh, my plan is every day going forward to get up real early <laughs> before work and do a coat and then do another coat at night before I go to bed. So I don't know. It's going to take a few days. But uh, doing this tape here took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Plus trying to, you know, trim it down to the side was real tricky. Try not to gouge the binding of the fretboard so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get started if you want to learn the method I'm doing just click the link in the description I'm not really gonna cover that too much because uh, I don't want to give anything away it's a course that I paid for and I watched so if you want to learn how to do it you can purchase, purchase the course yourself so anyway here we go Man, I gotta say, just after one coat, look how cool that looks. The mahogany color is just awesome looking. Man, it just looks great, the color of it. See if I could turn around without touching any part of the guitar. Anyway, that's coat number one of 12 to 18. 
It looks awesome so far. I'm really excited about how it's going to look after a few more coats. So there you go, 18 coats later, and I'm standing here looking at it, ready to kind of, you know, buff it out and stuff like that. But there's not a whole lot of sanding involved in this, in this process, which I like. I sand between a few coats, just whenever I felt like little dust nibs and stuff after it dried. And I do need to do a little bit of sanding here uh, before I do the buff, because I can feel some spots maybe where dust settled, some little, you know, pokies in there. So I'm going to real lightly sand at a really high grit and just knock that off. And then uh, I'll move on to buffing. Okay, so I did not buy any polish. Um, but this stuff came with some true oil that I bought. It's the stock sheen and conditioner. And it's supposed to give it like a satin finish. I decided, well, I kind of already liked a uh, less shiny surface, more of a satin finish. So I think I'm just going to try this. Since it came with it, and I don't have to spend any extra money, and of course, my finishing method may evolve over the years. I may end up going to more of a shiny finish. But for this first one, I'm just going to try this stuff. I got this thing from Amazon, a buffer wheel. See? It chucks up in your drill. Oops. Whew. So what I did is I just tested it on this piece of board that I was uh, drying off my uh, finish cloth with. So I'm just going to do that to the guitar with this stuff and then see how it goes. And just so you know, I already rubbed down the whole guitar. I ended up just using some 4 aught steel wool and that knocked off the uh, dust nibs. And then I blew it off with my air hose. And then I used a tack cloth and I wiped the whole thing down. So it's free of dust currently. So I need to go ahead and get started with this finish. Sorry, with this polishing. And then... Uh, See how it goes. So I'm going to start with the headstock and just move this way. So I may go through a couple rounds of this, I'm thinking. All right. We move on to the neck, through the body, and then I'll come to you when I'm done. We'll take a look at it. Looks like some of the pores, just saying. Some of the pores didn't quite get filled all the way. I can tell by looking at the back of the headstock. Man, the Indian Rosewood really got a lot of pores in it, huh? All right, I'll come back to you. Well, that was a kind of a bad experience. Uh, I'm not overly satisfied with the, the polish. <laughs> Definitely something I need to learn how to do better. Or get it one of those polish polishers on a stand that I can just hold the guitar in front of. That would be so much nicer. Using the drill is horrible. This thing is horrible. And this thing I will never use again. Never. Never going to use it again. You know why? Because now this guitar has some birthmarks that I'm not going to worry about right now. I'm going to come back later and after the guitar is finished and I've played on it for a while. But I'm so stinking mad right now, let me tell you. Because of, because of this stupid thing, this edge right here, it's like part of the Velcro is still exposed and it's kind of a hard edge where, it, where this thing joins to the pad. That, that Velcro is exposed, so you can probably guess what happened. Everything was fine on the headstock down here, and I'm doing the body, and I'm coming up right here. And this thing's spinning super fast, and what am, I, what am I doing? I'm touching the neck right here to get all the way up in the corner. Let me show you. That's why I said birth marks. Some marks that came about in the birth of this guitar. But I'm so angry right now. When I noticed that, I was so mad. Oh my gosh. I just stopped using that thing, and I just polished by hand. <laughs> Um, the neck, you know, it looks all right. I like the sheen on the neck. I wish the body was a little bit more glossy. Let me pan down for you. See it? It looks pretty good. I mean, it looks pretty good looking in the camera right here. So it's got a good gloss to it. It is not as glossy as it was before I did the polish. It's hard to see on, on the uh, soundboard because of the color. But, I mean, it looks pretty good. But I'm very mad about the... the the blemish now that I caused myself 
so I mean I've learned a lesson I don't know what to look out for next time but I need to come up with a better solution a better tool for the job but until then you know I'm gonna come back later and you know reapply finish and let it harden and then re try to repolish it but right now I've been going on a year and a half with this guitar trying to get it built and uh, I need to move on and get the uh, bridge and all that stuff done so that's what I'm gonna do okay so let me catch you up a little bit I went ahead and got the bridge position taped off all right I went through the whole process again like I did before I taped it up to mask it off and through the whole process to get this thing set where it goes my wife held it down for me while I put tape around the edges and then I put some tape around the bottom and kind of traced around this section here so so now what I got to do is take a razor blade and kind of score I'm real close to the edge of the bridge so I'm gonna score at the very edge of the tape and come just inside this line that I marked with pencil all the way around the bottom and then peel this tape up and reveal bare wood so that I can go ahead and glue this thing on so I'm a little nervous I'm getting me a brand new blade I'm going to go ahead and use a straight edge where I can I think I'm sticking ready to, to glue it. So I'll say let's do it. <laughs> Did not mean to go that far down. Okay, so what I've done is I put some wax on these things. Of course, I'm gonna run into problems. So, like I said, I got wax on them things. I'm gonna have to uh, have to wring these holes out a little bit more. I think it's not giving me enough play. It's just a great idea, ain't it? I guess I need to ream it out better than that next time. Now I got glue pieces. It's not going to plan, as you can tell. There you go, why don't I ding the guitar while I'm at it, huh? Goodness gracious, I'll tell you what. <laughs> should have known. I mean, you know, I should have known it was going to be like this. Should have known I was going to have issues. All you out there have done this before by having a good chuckle, huh? Mental note, next time I do this, I need a lot more uh, play with the with the hole that I drilled. I had to pop back in because I had another issue. I had these screws down, so I've just been driving them screws into the wood, tightening those wing nuts on the bottom. Of course, wing nuts ain't even tight. So you gotta back these off before you do it. So I probably damaged the, the dang bridge. I already took the tape off, I was like in the middle of trying to do too much and I took the tape off and realized I was not recording anymore so that's all I've done I've been cleaning up glue squeeze out now I get a whole new round of glue squeeze out since I tightened those down some more okay now okay what was that cracking noise I'm hoping it was that little piece of rosewood this is a uh, this video is a lesson in what not to do or how to do it poorly attaching a guitar bridge well if it could have gone wrong it absolutely went wrong oh my goodness I did, I did not expect that level of stress oh my goodness gracious it's uh I'm not ex <laughs> like I said, I'm not exactly sure that it actually even lined up. And once I came to my senses a little bit, I didn't even, I'm not even positively sure that I got it perfectly, perfectly square. I learned a lot of lessons, all right, doing this. When I masked off with a bridge, 
I got too close to the edges of where the actual bridge is with the tape. All right, I need to maybe give myself a little bit more room and do a better job of scoring. And then the second major thing was I need to remount those holes a little more. So I guess when I drilled them, I thought I had it in perfect spot. I must have moved my hand or tweaked it a little bit to make it not perfect. Because when I put that bolt in there, it was one to pull that bridge to one spot which is why I took it off and tried to ream them out a little bit. But they need to be rimmed out even more so that once the bridge is on, the bolts are in, I still have a little bit of play to make final adjustments. Goodness gracious. And then these stupid uh, bolts need to be backed off all the way, pretty much. I didn't realize they were bottoming out on the wings of the bridge, and I'm, and I'm cranking down on the wing nuts on the inside of there, which means I was just driving these bolt-ins into the bridge, which will have to be repaired, no doubt. I dropped the calls off the table. I had them on the edge of the table for some reason thinking oh, they'll stay there until I need them. I completely forgot about them because I was busy cleaning up glue and I just completely lost my mind. Things just went not so swimmingly. Uh, I'm going to take it. I'm going to chill out for a little while. I'm calling it. This is the end of this video. We'll come back in the next video. I was going to make this the last video in the series, all right? But... I need to, uh, I had a lot more footage than what I wanted. I'm just, all this stuff going through my head while I was doing this bridge. I'm just, I'm done with it for today. <laughs> um, and just uh, so you know, sneak peek, I got both sides bent on my next guitar. It's a quote, real quick sneak peek there. So I was doing that this morning too. So I've been working on that while this finish has been drying. All in all, uh, I'm not perfectly happy. In my head, I'm thinking it's awesome. For a first try, you know, the first attempt. I know you can probably look at this on the video and not see any issue. Everything looks okay, you know. But being the builder of this guitar from scratch, I know and think of everything in my head that I've, I've done wrong. Anyway, just a, another side note is I couldn't live with it. I went ahead and sanded down this little issue that I showed you from the sand from the buffing wheel. I sanded with some 220 and I'm going to start applying thin coat to finish. I've got leftover finish. I've done one coat already. I'm just going to keep applying coats until I build it up and then I'll buff it back down again right there on those two spots. What a journey this has been, right? Golly, this, this whole guitar build has been such a journey. But it's, it's a fantastic journey. As much stress as there's been and pulling my hair out and thinking and wondering what's going to happen. How, do, how am I going to do that? How am I going to pull that off? It's gone. You know, it's been a rocky road, but it's been a fun road. And the most fulfilling thing um, that I've made in woodworking uh, as, a, as a project here. So, I mean, it's leading me on to my next career in Luthery whenever I retire. So anyway, thanks for watching. I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.